Um, so first of all, we think of R&D as a line process. It's not a department. And that's what we do. And the research and development is a reward we give to our developers, depending on their contribution to uh, the overall value system of coding. They get hours of R&D that they can work on. And the R&D manager essentially manages the project, which given this variable pool of people, they manage and get outputs. And once it's outputted, it's then put into production by the champion. So that's the way we manage R&D in just that. But uh, the, the key aspects are basically single phrases, and we'll look at what things impacted from a team point of view. So we believe that uh, frugality is one big aspect of innovation. And we want to preserve it, even if it means artificially, you inject frugality, you do that. So you give the person less a resource, you give him an older phone, you give him a mass phone and say, get me better performance on this. And that's the R&D challenge. So R&D is given as a challenge. It has a very objective output expected, and that's what people have done. Not to say that we don't tell them this thing wild, think out of the box and all. So clearly we divide R&D in two facets, and both are equally welcome. One is exploratory R&D, and the other is introspective R&D. And the company says that I'm going to focus more on introspective R&D. That one thing I'm doing thousands of times a day, if you can create even 10% more efficiency increase in that, I'm going to value that more than some great idea you have. I mean, that's just for saying to keep them focused, and not that we don't value the other ones. But overall, these are the rates that we look at. So we have to have uh, acceptance of failure. It has to be befitting to the strategy of the company. It, is, it, it has to be linked to your survival. That's what R&D makes sense for. That it basically makes you more uh, survivable. You can, these are so basic factors that you would want your whole team to have that R&D perspective for anything and everything they do. The second aspect, of course, is strategic treatment. And this is where you go and get the funds for, from your top bosses, to say that this is exactly where we have to do R&D because it's going to benefit us, it's going to benefit the company. These are not exactly line functions, but they have uh, the middle tier or the second level functions, the program management level functions, who can visualize these needs and hence focus R&D on this part. So this is basically architecture, mix of people, portfolio of projects that you are doing for the right um, cross-navigation, cross-pollination of data, reverse engineering in some cases. Hey, they have done a great job, how do they do it? Can we hack it? So those are all also part of R&D. So I'm not going to have this holy grail of R&D for us. We, whatever we do beyond our line functions are R&D, and these are everything that it entails. Agility is probably one of the key aspects which I wish we focused on. And that, uh, that has to be something that is a first mover advantage. Now, in many cases, the kind of business which always gives you I mean, super normal returns is being a category creator. And that means that you need to be a first mover or an entrenched first mover also. Otherwise, there are a lot of first movers who get washed up because they're not so idly backed up. And you have to be ahead of competition and you have to have some anticipation and never launch a product before it's the right time. So pre-ordained product and launching before time can actually kill your concept. So you hold back, you hold it as aces up your sleeve, and as the competition comes, you frustrate them by throwing it at the right time. So that's what you keep a stack of sort of ammunition and things for yourself. And of course, for time management. So a lot of our tools are process R&Ds. We actually have done a tool which we developed internally, which is linked to the SVN. And we know exactly which guys, which line of code contributed to this particular downtime. And that guy has to come in, and I talk to him in Hindi for half an hour. <laughs> so he never does it this again. So, and this is a cornerstone. You have to be frugal. It has to justify, and not only will I do it better, I'll do it better at a better cost. That's the functionality. So when you're doing it, if you're rehacking the system, make sure it's worth lesser, and it's worth more. Both of them together. So it has to be economical, it has to give me an efficiency in terms of when I deploy it, my further development of coding in terms of headcount and all will come down because of it. It has to be focused on applied research, on things that we really hold as holy grail, or things we want to aspire to be. It has to make it something brought down to earth from a heavenly perspective. That's what frugality is to us. Of course, it has to be focused on ROI. Every person, by the way, top management or obviously is known, but in, in our department, I have 14 architect level person. About 30% of their salary is based on sales of the company. And 
Again, that's it. This is the last part. You will fail. You will fail 60% of the times. But that's just the initiation to start the next phase, to correct it and get it. And you be the perennial startup. You never give up. You go on being a startup till you succeed. There's no failure. And that's the cycle. And that's the power of negative results.